Good morning, everyone. How's it going? When what Steve, a warm welcome. When, when Steve arrived today, he just started grabbing people in the street, hugging them. There's an elevator woman. She gave a big, big I got hug. one for everyone out there. <laughs> Especially you and the white hat, ma'am. You could use it, I'm going to give it to you. Are you guys Giants fans, by the way? We got New York Giants fans here. Nice. They're so full of it. I see like a Los Angeles Dodger <laughs> hat out there, a Laker hat. It's all good. We appreciate like, we it, like everyone, guys, though. We make like it till you make it. I appreciate that. Uh, so I got a chance to meet Steve uh, a few months ago. We did a show uh, together. I was actually teaching him fencing. And uh, I was surprised. I mean, knew he was athletic. Um, but when I, you still think punter, probably not that punter, athletic. Punter, probably yeah, exactly. the short bus. But, uh, I'm okay with that, man. You were, he was actually amazing at fencing. He is an amazing athlete. Uh, is it safe to say? Would you say that I'm an amazing athlete or, not, or I'm an period. amazing athlete for a punter? Because I, I love it when period. people, especially on like amazing. social media, are like, dude, you are so jacked for a punter. I'm like, I, can I shake the stigma one time? But let me ask you this. So for me, you're an amazing athlete, period. In general, I would you say, that. would you think punters are athletic? No. I mean, at the end of the day, they're pro athletes, so they're probably more athletic than a typical dude rolling yeah. around on the street, but, but at the end of the day, the typical dude rolling around in, yeah. on the street of Manhattan is probably not too athletic. Yeah. So we're more athletic than most, but we're not, uh, we're not cut from a different it, cloth, put it that it's way. It's safe to say you may be the only punter that will be posing nude. Is that correct? Uh, she has posed nude, by the way. Sa safe to say. <laughs> what safe was that like, say. by the way? Uh, real weird, real weird. Um, and, and the disclaimer, it was really cold in there, so we're going to flash a picture up later. But, um, <laughs> but no, so I did, a, uh, I did a nude photo shoot. You couldn't see anything. I have a wife and four kids to think of. Uh, but I did a nude photo shoot, kind of like ESPN body issue. You know, they do kind of like the, uh, the classic artsy uh, photo shoot, sports specific. So I did that for bodybuilding.com. And they turned my mic down when I got up here because when I got out here and got <laughs> now this is loud and they just turned my volume down. Um, turn me back up, guys. So I did the photo shoot and uh, there it is, right there, everyone. It's not bad. They, they, they had, the <laughs> they had the Photoshop. Guys, the girls in front. Let's hear it. <laughs> they had to Photoshop out everything that was like dangling to the floor, but they. <laughs> I'm lying. It was cold in there. I don't know where we go from here. <laughs> so that, but that was really strange. But after I see like the, you know, the finished product, it's actually pretty cool. So, did, you, um, did your wife like? Did you have to ask your wife permission in order to do something like this, or you just yes and it? no? I mean, she's, dude, she's married to me, so it's just yeah. like you signed up for this. You know what <laughs> what I mean? And I've been with her since I was uh, 19. I just turned 19. We started dating, so I've been with her uh. forever. So. She's really kind of, you guys think that I have energy and I'm a little bit off my rocker now. I mean, I'm 33, just think 14 years yeah. ago. So uh, I've matured so much, thanks to her. <laughs> I'm going to try, I'm gonna try that with my wife. Complete wacko. I'm going to try, you signed up for this with my wife next time, that I, I need to yes. do something crazy. Yeah. So, but I mean, let's talk not? a little. My, my to-do list is so much longer than my to-do list. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your uh, upbringing. So. I know football wasn't your dream when you were a kid growing up in Indiana. Talk a little bit about uh, where you grew up and, and how you got into football and what, what, what was high school Steve Weatherford like? Um, so you and I are actually very similar. I don't know if you guys know his story, but he kind of fell into fencing the same way that I fell into football. You know, um, the story that you told me, Tim, was – just kind of looking to get out of, like, gym class or just out of <laughs> class in general, and there was a, a fencing sign up. He was like – did I get out of class? Sign me up. Sign me up. And now, you know, he goes to the Olympics, represents our country. Just an incredible story. Uh, and an awesome guy. I had the pleasure of meeting him at the charity event about six months ago, and he was receiving an award. And, and he, I was like, wow, you know, it's cool to meet an Olympic fencer. He's like, dude, I'm a huge fan. And at that point, I'm like, never mind, dude. Screw your award. I'm a big fan. So <laughs> it was really cool for me. And then we exchanged numbers. We kind of uh, kept in touch. And then I host a TV show uh, on Spike TV. And they actually said, we're doing a TV show with an Olympic fencer. I'm like, it's not Tim Morehouse. Is it? They're like, it is. I'm like, my buddy. So anyway, I'm going to go off on tangents today. So <laughs> just buckle up and stick with me. So back to my story. Uh, I'm playing soccer. I'm a, I played soccer, football, basketball my entire life track. Uh, never played football uh, because the season is the same as soccer. And I was 
like that big around. Um, was it true you were like 110 pounds? I was in high 108 school? pounds as a freshman in high school. So, and I wasn't really short. I was like five foot nine, uh, but definitely the skinniest kid in my class of like 300 students. And I always had like dreams and aspirations of you know being an elite athlete. And I was always fascinated with um, different ways to become bigger, faster, stronger. Nutrition, recovery, and it was before you could just pull out your phone or uh, and Google things or go to bodybuilding.com. And, and so I had to go to the library and I had to like find books on my own at 14 years old. And mind you, like I can barely sit still long enough to do a 20 minute show when I'm actually like moving around and talking. So sitting at a library <laughs> and reading books to me was like a death sentence, but that's how much I wanted to empower myself with the knowledge. And once I did that, um, at that point, I devised a plan for myself nutritionally and uh, in different training modalities to become bigger, faster, stronger. And during the course of four years in high school, I gained 117 pounds. So I went from 108 pounds wow. to 225 pounds and uh, you know, enabled myself to be able to get a scholarship to college. And then once I got a scholarship to college, you know, continuously, um, you know, moving your goals up. You know, at first it was like, you know what, I just want to not be the skinniest kid in class. And then it was, okay, now I'm not the skinniest kid in class. Now I want to play on the JV team. And then it was the varsity team. And then I wanted to be all state. And then I wanted to be all state in all four sports that I played. And, you know, as I'm achieving these goals that I set out for myself, the ceiling for me, my potential gets higher and higher because I set all these micro goals for myself without knowing I was giving myself the ability to play professionally, and so it wasn't, I mean, I had the dream of playing professionally just like, you know, every little boy did sitting in their backyard throwing the ball with their older brother or younger brother or dad, you know, dreaming about catching uh, uh, a touchdown in the Super Bowl. I mean, granted, I never got to do that, but I played in the Super Bowl. I mean, I kicked the football, but I was there, man. I was on the team. I was on the side. You did it. You did they it. They even let me touch the trophy, um, but it was just, it was empowering myself it was having a vision for myself and setting a goal. And once I kind of set the overall goal, and then it was about you know these micro goals and those short-term goals leading to long-term success. And now, now I've played for 10 years. I've won a Super Bowl. I've been very blessed, um, you know. And I still have the opportunity to continue to play. But for me, that's not in my heart. My heart is is fitness and helping people, inspiring people, motivating people to show them like like look where I was, man. I was a skinny bum from Indiana. And, and I took the time to, to give myself a chance. And, and it's not like, you know what, I want everybody to be on the front of magazine covers. Th that's not what I'm trying to impress upon everybody sitting out in the crowd and people viewing at home. It's more about having a vision for yourself and, and having that vision within something that you're passionate about and then setting a long-term goal, but then to, to be able to achieve that long-term goal, it's about the micro goals and the baby steps of getting closer and closer for that every day. And I break it down weekly uh, to say, okay, on Sunday nights, I spend about one hour and I plan out every single day for the next six days. And so I have an overall goal. And then at the end of every day, I kind of self-evaluate, kind of scout myself. Okay, how did today go? What did I freaking crush? What did I suck at? You know, and then at the, the next week, I can kind of improve that. But I think if you have an overall, like an overarching goal for the day, a to-do list, a goal list, you can kind of give yourself a grade, A, B, C, D, F, on how you did that day. And sometimes you're, you're going to be bummed out, and some days you're going to get done, and you're going to be like, man, I am the freaking man. I crushed today. And you can kind of take that momentum into the next day and the next day. But I think in order for you to find that long-term success, you, it's those small goals uh, that give you that tiny little sense of achievement. It could be something as simple as, you know what, today I'm not going to drink any Coke and I'm going to drink at least a gallon of water. And then that, you know, you do that for 30 days and then it becomes a life habit and then that will lead to, you know, more health, more success, more energy. By the Sorry, way, man. this is Tim's Steve 24-7. No, it's all right good. Now. It's all good. But I, I want to bring, and by the way, we're going to do some workouts later as well. Steve's going to take me through one of his workouts, so... That'll be a treat. But let me ask you, you were playing soccer, actually, when you were discovered by your high school football coach. Is that correct? Like, you hadn't even playing on the football team no, really in your mind. No, I had never touched a football more than, like, playing, you know, tackle football with my brothers in the backyard. And I, uh, I had no skill set for it aside from uh, being a soccer player and having a strong leg for that. So we didn't have a kicker or a punter on our, on our junior varsity or varsity team. And so the head football coach comes to the soccer coach 
and says, hey, um, we really, really need a kicker. You know, do you have anybody who have a, has a strong leg and would want to try it? And, uh, and the coach kind of looked over. He goes, yeah, that, that skinny kid over there in the corner, he's got, a, you know, he's got the hammer of Thor attached to his hip, you know? So I'm like, uh, you guys didn't giggle right there, but that's kind of a funny way of me <laughs> saying I have a rocket launcher for a leg. Uh, but thanks so much, tough crowd. Um, so I was very thankful that I had enough courage to try something new. Uh, and I was also very thankful that my high school soccer coach let me do both because – um, a lot of schools have a rule that you can only play one sport at a time. So my school was flexible with me and my coaches were flexible with me. And so essentially what I would do, school would get out and I would go to, to football practice for like 25 minutes. I would do the special team section of practice and then sprint over to soccer and practice with the team for the next two hours. And then on Tuesdays and Saturdays, I would play soccer games. And then on Fridays, I would play football games. So uh, I was super busy. I earned 13 varsity letters in high school, but as you guys can tell from the 15 minutes with us, I don't really get tired. So um, <laughs> I kind of used my overabundance of energy, my extreme ADHD, and you know, kind of a dash of OCD on top of that to use that as a weapon. And um, you know, I'm very thankful that I was put in the situation to be successful. But you know, a lot of people get opportunities in life that they're not prepared for. Um, and you know, I was just very thankful, very blessed that I was prepared for that. Um, but I was also very thankful that I had enough courage because when you're 14 years old, 108 pounds, and you really don't have much swag, you know, to go out there on the football team when everybody's bigger, stronger, faster than you are, um, it's, it's intimidating. You know, I was wearing my pads, and it looked like I was like a bobblehead, you know, but I could kick the ball really well, so then I was accepted. So I want to cover a bunch of stuff with you. I want to ask you, the NFL right now, a lot of talk about concussions um, and the safety of the sport. Where do you fall, where do you fall on that? The NFL's been getting a lot of kind of bad press around the safety of the sport. Yeah, I mean, that's the, I, to me, I think the NFL is one of the greatest businesses in the world. And that's a bold statement. But if you just look at the growth of what they've done in the last 10 years, uh, I don't want to say it's second to none. You know, maybe it's behind like Twitter and and, and Facebook and Instagram and, and, and the different tech sectors. But as far as just a brick and mortar business, the NFL is, I mean, they are trendsetters right now. And the only thing that's going to stop them is going to be people getting turned off. And for the future of the game, parents like me, parents that know, parents that are in the know, to stop their children from playing football. You know, I have uh, an eight year old son. Would you let your kids play football? Uh, and I won't let my son play football, you know, and that's, you know, that's coming from a guy that lived it for 10 years and had have seen uh, two of my very close friends lose their life because of the abrasive nature and, and the concussions and the brain damage done in football. So, you know, I was neighbors with Junior Seau. He lost his life, shot himself in the chest, uh, was later found out that he had CTE. And then just recently, Tyler Sash, a teammate of mine, was... Uh, he was the captain of our punt team, uh, Super Bowl 46. Uh, one of the only reasons I have that ring that you're wearing right now. And um, he overdosed on, uh, on, on painkillers, and it was later found out that he struggled with extreme depression and CTE. He actually had the same amount of CTE that Junior Seau had. And Junior Seau played for 20 years in the NFL. So um, I don't want that for my kid. You know, it's just, to me, uh, is, as wonderful as my life is right now, I would never trade that to, to check out at 40. Um, life is bigger than sports. It's bigger than football. And there's a lot of things in life that can bring you joy without kind of like the fame and fortune of the NFL. And, uh, you know, and I have a very small degree of that. I've been very blessed to, you know, financially do well. But, you know, when I say do well, it's like by comparison to, you know, my dad and my brothers. And, and I'm not making $20 million a year. I was very fortunate but where else am I going to make the type of money I made in the NFL? Um, I'm really not that intelligent. You know, I'm just a really, really <laughs> hard worker. So have your kids asked you about playing football? Do they want to play oh, football? Yeah, my son. I mean, I coached this flag football game yesterday and I'll allow him to do that. I think, I think we should start doing that for kids now because you don't have to bash your head into another kid's head in order to learn the game of football you can learn spatial awareness and anticipation and the playbook and defenses and how to take angles playing flag football without my son you know killing brain cells having concussions tearing acls i don't think tackle needs to be a part of the game so 
I'm going to hold him out as long as I can, and the, the first year that I will allow him to play will be when he's old enough to drive a car. That's kind of, uh, you know, and that's going to be probably about sophomore year, and still, if I don't feel like his body's mature enough for it, I still won't let him play. Um, but he's just, he's it must nine. be tough for the league, because, though. I mean, that's all, that all my saying. son knows. Yeah. That's all he has ever known his entire life. He's eight years old, and I played for 10 years. So all he's ever known is, is me playing football. And it's a funny story. About two years ago, three years ago, when he's five years old, I take him to church uh, at our home in San Diego in the off season. And I pick him up from Sunday school, and the teacher didn't know that I played ball. And I was like, oh, you know, how was Ace? How, you know, was he well behaved? And she's like, oh, he's so good. But it's, he was, it was kind of strange. He was going around. Uh, Sunday school and asking the other kids what team their daddy plays for. <laughs> like, he didn't get it. Like, he just thought dads played pro football, you know? Um, and so now he's older. He <laughs> so he was a, asking the other yeah, kids at school, kind of like, a, what, what what team does your dad play for? Yeah, right. He's like, did your dad play for, like, the Chiefs or the Saints? Because my dad plays for the Giants, you know I mean? Super Bowl ring, no big deal. Um, <laughs> and then I kind of had to explain it to him, like, you know, your dad's kind of a big deal, bro. Yeah. Um, but not that big a deal because he only kicks the ball, but he's... <laughs> Still on the team. Um, we're going to keep talking, but you were going to show me some workouts. I want to make sure we get to that. So I know uh, we're going to Are you ready back. for this? I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for this, but I'm I'm. Better tighten up. it up, guys. I'm tight- Can we get some crowd participation? <laughs> so let's give it up. Give it up. So one of the things Steve wanted to show me was how to get six-pack abs. And just so he's not the guy saying you should get six-packs abs who doesn't have them. He actually, you want to you show these guys? With the, look, that is ridiculous. Wait, so, can you hold okay. it up for a second? It was just a flash, man. Dude, it's kind of like Mardi Gras. That is, that is ridiculous. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> so that's like the one, one thing to me that kind of comes a little bit natural because I'm actually uh, very lean, uh-huh. by, like genetically yeah. very lean. It's really tough for me to yeah. like build muscle. So everybody's kind of got their different things that they struggle with. But for me, being lean yeah. is, is easy, but... Building muscle is difficult. Yeah. So yeah, you look like you're like right in between. <laughs> I'm a little scared He's already. Much more skilled than I am lean. I'm feeling so really I, bad. I'll take on him, the man. Stage Everybody's right got now. their own gifts. But one thing I think is, is very simple and applicable to everybody that's watching, everybody that's sitting in here, is is a plank. You know, there's not a lot of moving parts, and it's pretty simple. And what I do is uh, a seven minute plank, which everybody's like, oh, it's seven minutes. It's really not that difficult. Um, so essentially, Tim, let's go. Will you walk me through my plank? Okay. Oh, you're going to do it or I'm going to do it? You're I like you doing it You're facing me. On. So, essentially, <laughs> we're not going to do the entire thing. All right, that's good. But we're in, we're in the, the plank position right now. We're going to do this for Got 60 it. seconds. Got it. And then after you finish the first 60 seconds without your knees touching, you're going to you come rotate. to your side. The and sound. you're going to do that oh my God. for 60 seconds. And my. then you're going to go to your right side. Okay, I'm going to keep going this way. I did squats yesterday, so you guys drink this <laughs> in. This is the best side so of Steve right here, guys. That's Enjoy the 60 view. seconds, and then we go back to the front, 45 seconds, 45 seconds, 45 seconds on your right, and then without your knees touching, then we go 30, 30, 30, and that does a lot of different things for you. Not only will it develop your core strength and the way that your abs look, but it's yeah. also really good for lower back, and, you know, if you're, you're busy like a lot of people are, you don't have 20 minutes to get your abs in. So I do that like two or three times Just a week. Just seven minutes a day? That's all you six need? Minutes. It's actually, if you want to do the six math, minute six abs minutes Steve and 45 Weatherford. seconds. So, um, so all these guys can have for, your abs. For people starting out, six I recommend doing like 30, 30, 30, 20, 20, 20, and then like 15, 15, 15, and then work yourself up. Um, but it really, really does work, man. I mean, I'm not, I don't make any money telling people that. I truly believe in it. It's worked for me, and it also is really good for your lower back. A lot of people have low back pain because of either weak abs or weak lower back, and this actually kind of fixes the muscular imbalance. If somebody goes to the gym all the time and works abs, then their low back is going to be weak. So you have to keep everything kind of symmetrically strong. Um, so that's my recommendation for that. And then, you know, you can build your abs up doing this, but unless you um, find a diet that works well for you and that you actually enjoy, then at that point you really essentially, I would say 85, 90% of actually being able to see your abs like going on spring break and being ripped is your diet. So the chocolate croissant I had this morning. Yes. Not so, in the Steve Weatherford. So uh, croissa- croissants, oh, I pizzas, like this burgers. What uh, should people eat? So they should avoid those things. What should they eat? No, I mean, I eat... Uh, I eat burger. I had a burger last night, but it's all about timing for me. Yeah. So when I have pizza, when I have hamburgers, it's always either before a really tough workout. Like if I'm hitting like a heavy leg workout on Monday morning, then the night before I'll have four or five pieces of pizza or, you know, 
a, th- <laughs> a three patty hamburger because I know when I wake up the next morning, my body's going to need that. It's just going to burn it right up. And then the other meal I have after that, I know my metabolism is so high and I just, you know, my my body needs those calories. So it's going to burn it right up so I can have pizza the night before and then a hamburger after. But then, you know, the next couple of days after that, then it's going to be, you know, chicken and rice and vegetables, um, you know, whole wheat pasta, um, turkey meatballs type of stuff. So um, it's it's balance. You know, you don't ever want to completely rob yourself of the joy of eating because we all we all love it. You know, it tastes good. You get a yep. little bit of a uh, little bit of euphoric buzz when you eat something that tastes really good. All right. Well, we have uh, crowd questions. I have one more question for you too, but uh, we got we got some crowd questions that we're gonna. Why go did to. I t- did I talk too much, Tim? No, no, no. It wasn't did a great job. You did a great job. All. I wanted to ask you actually. Have you been following the Gronk Gronkowski party boat? thing at all i haven't gronk actually uh gronkowski and i have the same marketing agent my marketing agent is actually oddly enough much more busy getting him deals than me but <laughs> <laughs> thank you for laughing <laughs> finally sure they're watching enjoy it yeah, see i think you need the weatherford party boat have you want he i do rob it'll gronkowski be, it'll, it'll, it'll be Patriots nothing but turkey right bacon now. and protein shakes dude it's gonna get crazy the uh the Patriots guy's on a cruise right now and pretty much with like it's on a regular cruise boat with him and his seven hundred of his friends just going crazy and then all the other people on the boat are like sending Instagram pictures of it. So yeah, I can see it. Uh, I can see it. I can't wait to, I can't wait to see what comes of that. Um Yeah, exactly. All right, right here. Should we toss him the football? For anyone asking Yes, the yes, if it's you want to ball question, football, you have to this catch is only the ball. Gonna end. <laughs> and now you're gonna see that I can't Don't throw a football. Fumble! Oh my god. <laughs> And you saved that girl. I'm going to be honest with you. I <laughs> felt very confident about you catching it. Not so much about our quarterback. <laughs> oh, you need the mic still. Football on the mic. All right. So what's your question? Oh, um, first. What's your uh, name? Where are you from? Derek. I'm born here. From here. Giants fan. Thank you for helping me. My man. Help, helping our team win a championship. Give this back to you also. Well, hold on, man. Hold this for what? me. Here. Oh, he's getting the Super Bowl oh, ring, too. God. Here, put that on. And you have to put it on the hand you hold the microphone with. I learned that. It's <laughs> All right, what's your question, oh, no, Gary, from New York? That's not a giveaway, by the way. That's not a giveaway. Oh, uh, my question is, what keeps you motivated? If you were more curvy, I would let you have it. Oh. <laughs> All right, my question is, what keeps you motivated to just keep working out, and what's your advice for You someone? know, it's, it's a great question, Gary, and I get that from time to time on social media. That's one of the reasons I love Derek, interacting. Derek. Derek? Derek? Yes. Well, I'm going to call you Gary, so. <laughs> Gary. Gary's got no no hips or boobs, so. <laughs> um, but Derek, so it's a great question. I get that asked on social media all the time, and my motivation comes from like my willingness to prepare and plan my week. Um, kind of like I talked on Sunday night, spending an hour thinking about what what my what is my schedule this week, and then what do I hope to achieve within that schedule? You know, like I I knew I had to come up here. Art, I'll take that back. I knew I had the opportunity to come up here. Uh, Because this is something that I was excited about. I was talking to Tim on the phone last night. I'm like, dude, we're going to rip the mic tomorrow. Uh, (laughs) These people are going to think I'm a complete weirdo. So if I haven't achieved that yet, give me two more minutes. Um, But it's about taking that time to plan your day and then, um, you know, plan your week and plan your day. And then you kind of use that momentum. And Mondays are my favorite freaking day because that's the day that I get to set the tone, the energy level the mindset, my perspective for the entire week. And it's just kind of about Mondays are about creating momentum for myself. And, you know, sleep is, is important. I don't get enough of it, but, um, you know, I've already become, I don't want to say the master because I'm not a master, but of my perspective, I think the greatest tool that I have that I've developed for myself is my perspective. You know, so if I have to go do something and I don't want to go do it, I kind of just take like 30 seconds to sit down and close my eyes and be like, you know what? I'm fortunate to be able to go do this today. I want to get something out of this. Even if I just touch one person today, motivate one person, and they email me or Facebook message me six months from now and be like, you know what? What you said when you did this changed my life. Thank you. And that's, it's an opportunity. And so it's just like my ability to manipulate my perspective is definitely my most powerful tool I've developed for myself. By the way, sitting next to you, I just want to go lift weights. I don't know why. You Let's go! <laughs> All right, who's that? Wait, you got to, Derek, we need our football back. It's a Super Bowl football. Don't throw the ring, though. We'll just don't hit a camera either. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Here you go, Steve. All right, what's your name? 
Hi, I'm Jen. <laughs> Jen, you better put that mic down because you're not Odell. You're not Odell. <laughs> you're not break the camera, Steve. The oh yeah. Jen, Jen, it's okay to it's okay to drop it like a microphone and then kind of give me like a little bit one of these. Can you do the Quan? You can do the. Come on, Jen. I'm putting you on the spot. After Maybe the show like. <laughs> after the show is over. All right, Jen. After what do you got? Okay, I so like that. I like you're much more curvy than he is. <laughs> so I wanted to do a shout out because I did a little research. You are a um, Illinois alumni. Oh, yeah. Right? Illinois. My, my brother Michael. Um, he is a freshman. He just started college. We, we he, are sending him a Snapchat <laughs> when we get done. <laughs> um, he loves. The university because of the the family field but the sports environment is incredible mm. um he sends me a video like every day of like a game that he's at and he's I've, I've never seen him this happy so that's a personal side note but my question for you um time management you know being a college student um is there a certain schedule that works for you and you think that you can give us some inside tips kind of bouncing off yeah of, no I, it's, a, it's a great question i think we'll, we'll piggyback it off of what i uh, the the advice i gave gary derrick um, but it's, it's planning, uh, but it's also about prioritizing your life. You know, you think about what am I mo most passionate about? What is a priority in my life? What do I hope to achieve this week, this day, this morning? And, and, and then that will kind of give you not only your motivation, but it'll give you an opportunity to say, okay, these are the three things that are most important to me this week or today. So let me make sure that I get them in. And for me, I always make my family a priority, my fitness a priority, and then quiet time in the morning in my faith. And I don't care if you're a Buddhist, I don't care if you don't believe in God, meditation, just quiet time to really kind of center yourself in the morning and kind of give yourself direction. It could just be 10 minutes of waking up, getting out of bed, brushing your teeth, and then just being quiet and thinking about what kind of energy, and I know it kind of sounds like Zen Buddhist, but this, uh, this is, for me, it works. And it's just, I close my eyes and I think about things that I'm grateful for. I show three to four gratitudes and they change from day to day. You know, like this morning, I was thankful for peanut butter. I love peanut butter. <laughs> and I had peanut butter on my P28 toast this morning. And for everybody that doesn't know what P28 is, it's protein bread. So, <clears throat> um, but things that I'm thankful for, you know, I could be thankful uh, that I had the, the friendship and the opportunity to come up here and talk to Tim and share my motivation, share my journey, share you know, things in my life that, that I love, and I want you guys to kind of maybe take some energy away from that and, and apply it into your own life. Like, listen, you know, one of my goals for 2016 seems stupid, but I wanted to get 19-inch arms. And I walked up to Tim this morning after I got out of <laughs> my car, and he met me at the loading dock, and he hadn't seen me in, what, like two months? Yeah. He goes, dude, you got big. <laughs> and I'm like, it's working. So, um, you know, I had several things I wanted to achieve in 2016, but I think it's just about prioritizing. And so these, these six goals that I had for 2016, I screenshotted them off the notes section of my phone, and I Instagrammed them because once you write things down and you say them out loud to somebody, then they become real. Then people will hold you accountable. You know, I have uh, two, 201,000 followers on Instagram. I made it real for them. You know, so if April 1st rolls around and I don't have 19-inch guns, I failed. You know what I mean? But if it's 18.75 and I failed to get there on time, I still got 18 and a half inch arms. You dig? So it's about making high lofty goals, but then it's about make, you know, making yourself accountable for them by telling people, by writing it down, by making it real. Cool. All right. I think we got, oh, God, the LA guy. Don't, uh, hi, thanks for being What's here. your name? What's your name? Yes. Where the are you Pats from? fan? Oh, oh sorry. You can't ask any questions. You. Oh, absolutely we can. We love seeing you guys in the Super Bowl. <laughs> so uh, my show name is Andy, of, by the way. Show on the side of that ring, man. You got it back. Oh, wait. It says, oh, it rings out there. It says, it says Eric has the ring. <laughs> Patriots 14, Giants more. Oh. So I was born and raised in New York. As Derek pointed out, I'm a diehard Pats fan. So 2011, 2008. Where do we go wrong, man? Big... <laughs> Dad is from Boston, that's why. Big, uh, Fair enough. Big year for me. So, um, I love Tom Brady, too, man. He's dreamy. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, exactly. continue. America's sweetheart. So to tone it down a little bit, um, not that I'm getting this vibe necessarily from you, but how important is rest in uh, fitness? Um, you know, and that's two things that I can recommend to anybody that wants to achieve anything in life. You have to have the passion for it. So 
you know, you have your goal, and then it, if it's a goal you're passionate about, that's the first key to it. And then the other two things uh, that are free, uh, in addition to passion is free, setting a goal is free, is sleeping is free. Now, granted, that costs you time, and I think that's our most precious commodity, but you have to, you have, you don't find time to sleep. You don't find time to work out. You make time. You have to make that a priority in order for your brain to function how it's supposed to function. You can eat the healthiest out of everybody, but if you don't sleep and you're not getting enough water, that brings me to the next point, drinking enough water. And, you know, I like the green tea and a coffee every once in a while, and I might have a little Red Bull and vodka. Not that I need Red Bull, but it tastes good. <laughs> He so, may have had it before he came but on stage. I I know that up until that point where I'm gonna kind of like treat myself to a Coke or a Diet Coke or a beer or, or you know Absolute and Red Bull, I need to get my water in. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like uh, I want to have this later tonight. So let me make sure that I get everything in in a row up until this point. Um, you know, it's a perfect example. I did a polar bear plunge on Saturday, Seaside Heights, and I rented a party bus. Thirty of my friends we drove down there, and I knew that we were gonna be drinking the entire way down there. And I'm not much of a drinker. But I knew that I'm drinking all day, I'm exhausted, I get home at 4 p.m., I'm not going to want to hit the gym. And if I, if I try to hit the gym, I'm probably not going to be able to drive there. Uh, so it's either there's going to be an Uber involved, and by the time I get there, dude, my workout's going to suck. So I ended up getting up at like 4.30 in the morning, going to the gym, getting my workout in, then meeting my friends at 8 a.m., and then I could enjoy the rest of the day because I made my fitness and my nutrition a priority. And then that enabled me to make... Red Bull and absolute a priority for the rest of the day. <laughs> so priorities, bro. Weatherford party bus. It's coming. It's coming. I think we got See, one. I can't have a cruise ship yet, dude. I'm uh, a punter, but I had a bus. And when I say a <laughs> bus, it was really only 27 people. It was a short bus, but it was fun. All right, we got one more question in the back. Hey, Steve. Uh, big Giants fan, so thank you. Yeah, we're the what's Giants your, fan. What's your name? Where are you from? Andrew from Queens. Uh, Andrew. And... I just have two questions. I guess Dude, you are trendy, man. You got like the headphones on your neck. Can we zoom in on him a little bit? A lot of accessories. Dude, you accessories. should be up here, man. You look way more cool than I do. I My arms that. are bigger, though. That's the only reason I'm up here. But very fair. But I guess the, uh, the two things I want to know was, one, you're huge on social media in general. And I know a lot of athletes try to do that. So what have you found to be you know, your big success besides, I guess, uh, the Weatherford Wednesdays, which you have? Um, so what do you do as an athlete to get that big on, on those platforms, and then I guess the other question was, what's something that we didn't see on a Super Bowl run that would be, you know, really awesome to talk about? I don't know if I can go there about the Super Bowl run. Um, okay, so first things first, how did I kind of build my social media following? Well, it takes time, and especially it takes time if you're going to do it genuinely. Like, I, I'm never the type of guy to exchange my uh, integrity for popularity, so aside from a couple shirtless selfies... Here and there. Like a humble brag. I'm like, hey, guys, it's a beautiful weather out here. Look how warm it is. But I'm really just taking like a selfie video so you guys can see how jacked I am after I worked out. But aside from that, um, you know, I, I, I've done it the right way. Um, and the one thing that I love about social media is, is I could just kind of be organic. Like a lot of guys don't, they filter it. You know, like they don't put certain facets of their life on social media. And I don't do that. You do it. I, I, what I do during the day, like if my wife, I'm not answering my phone and my wife wants to know where I'm at, she just goes to like Twitter or Instagram. Like, where's he at? Okay, da 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 Okay, now he's at AOL Build. He'll, he's probably going to be home never. Um, <laughs> but I, I love social media because it totally bridges the gap in between myself and anybody that wants to know anything about my life. So whether it's being a father and having four kids and how do I manage that with uh, having a charitable foundation and doing things like this with my friends and sharing my motivation and, and playing pro football and, and owning two businesses and, you know, the fitness stuff. So um, I think I do it because I feel very blessed. Like, I get to do some really rad stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I get to meet really cool people. And, you know, I, I met Tim, and, and I show up, and he's like, dude, I'm a huge fan. I'm like, me too, man. Do we just become <laughs> best friends? We did. Yep. We did. We did. <laughs> um, but I get to meet cool people like that and they already kind of have a little bit of an affinity for me or, or some adoration for me because I was a part of something they loved like New York Giant football or fitness or you know whatever I'm involved in or maybe they don't care about football or fitness or maybe they just love how I raise my family and the fact that I'm like openly um, you know I'm open about my entire journey like when I do things that suck and my wife yells at me like dude I'm on Snapchat and I'm like dude I just got MF for like 30 minutes <laughs> my wife. you know what I mean like I'm real with it 
And I think that resonates with people. It humanizes me because I'm just a regular dude. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, okay, let me tell you, retract that. I'm a regular dude with a rocket launcher for a leg. And then when April 1st rolls around, I'm going to be a regular dude with a rocket launcher for a leg and 19-inch arms. But, dude, you and I are not that different. You know what I mean? It's true. Uh, Steve, I want to thank you for coming on AOL Bill. Blast, Give it up guys. to the man right here. Steve Weatherford, Super Bowl champ. I'm going to get one more Weatherford hug here.